morning. Welcome to Devotions. Um, following along on the Treasury of Prayer Through the Ages, the HarperCollins Book of Prayers, um, where I pick one at random. We take some deep breaths and settle in. And pick a prayer at random. I read it through once. I read it through a second time and share my thoughts. And read it through the third time. And I invite you to, um, before we get into it, I invite you to like and subscribe and comment below. Let me know what you think of the devotions. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, do you have a different interpretation of things? And you know that's that's quite all right. I love discussions like that. So I encourage you to um, to comment. So take some deep breaths as we've been doing every day. Settling down into that deep space where you and God communicate the most. A prayer at random. Okay. This one is by John Calvin. He lived from 1509 to 1564. He inspired the Protestant Reformation in Geneva, governing both the religious and the political efforts of the city according to biblical principles as he interpreted them. His influence qu quickly spread to other countries such as Holland and Scotland, while the Puritans in England largely adopted his teachings. His daily prayers, which he composed for ordinary people of Geneva, reflect his conviction that spiritual faith is worthless without practical application. In the morning. My God, Father and Preserver, who in your goodness has watched over me in this past night and brought me to this day, grant that I may spend the day wholly in your service. Let me not think or say or do a single thing that is not in obedience to your will, but rather let all my actions be directed to your glory and the salvation of my brethren. Let me attempt nothing that is not pleasing to you, but rather let me seek happiness only in your grace and goodness. Grant also that as I labor for goods and clothing necessary for this life, I may constantly rise my mind, raise my mind upward to the heavenly life which you promise to all your children. My God, Father, and Preserver. Well, you know, I, I like to also use um, mother or spirit or other different pronouns for God. Um, not just father, but as they understood it in that patriar patriarchal time, and we're still kind of living in that time too, aren't we? Um, father was most likely used, and we still use that when we do baptisms or blessings in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit together as the Trinity. So um, here he is addressing God as Father, like Jesus addressed God as Abba, meaning Daddy. So, at once, God is both overall, as close as a father, and a protector. So he says, My God, Father and Preserver, who in your goodness has watched over me in this past night and brought me to this day. Now, there used to be a lullaby um, prayer that, that went... Um, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the, um, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, 
um, well, you know it. <laughs> if you want to write it in the comments the right way, that's fine. But I used to change it up, and um, the last lines were, Angels watch me while I sleep. Not, I, I didn't want to scare my kids with their possibility that they could pass away overnight, but anyway, <clears throat> who in your goodness has watched over me in this past night and brought me to this day? Um, yeah, it's overnight when we're sleeping, we're not really conscious that we're there, that we're even existing at that time, and you know, we're vulnerable to all kinds of things that could happen, so. We're leaving ourselves in God's hands overnight, and every morning we just bless God that we were given another morning, another day. Grant that I may spend the day holy in your service. In your service. That, that uh, he, he's praying that he doesn't have any uh, time where he's not enjoying God's presence, that he's not working for the good of others, and uh, <clears throat> that his actions would have meaning and have a purpose to them. Let me not think or say or do a single thing that is not obedient in, to your will. Wow. Wow. That presupposes that we know what God's will is for us. And me not think or say or do a single thing that is not in obedience to your will. That's a, that's a tough ask. A real tough ask. But we can pray for the, um, the awareness, the desire to do things according to God's will. But rather let all my actions be directed to your glory and the salvation of my brethren. Well, yeah, to the benefit of God, to the benefit of others. Let me attempt nothing that is not pleasing to you. Wow, I can't imagine how many times, how many things a day we do that are not pleasing to God. I'm talking about sin yesterday, the breaking of relationship with between you and God, between you and another person between you and creation, basically, between you and your own best self, the self that God created you to become. And any breaking with that, those relationships in some way is sin, in my book. So, Calvin is, is praying, let me not, let me attempt nothing that is not pleasing to you. But rather, let me seek happiness only in your grace and goodness. In other words, not working for your own happiness, but working for in service to others and in working in God's grace that we'd be allowed to work for God another day and in God's goodness, in gratitude for all the things that, that God has allowed us that we have been given. Grant also that as I labor for the goods and clothing necessary for this life, and we do, I mean, laboring for God does not mean that we throw all our earthly cares out the window. Um, Calvin recognizes here that we do need to labor for our daily necessities. Although some of us, some of us, what we think are necessities are actually desires instead of actual needs. That I may constantly raise my mind upwards to the heavenly life which you promise to all your children. God promises to all of us a seat, um, a place in heaven, a place to enjoy the company of the Trinity, to enjoy the company of our God, um, a place eternally. 
So Calvin here is praying that he constantly raise his mind upwards. And maybe it's not just life in the world to come. Maybe it's life in this world as well. That as we're working and, and laboring for God and for the benefit of others, um, trying to stay away from sin as best as we are able and actually working out our faith with works of service, that during that time that we constantly raise our minds to God, to God's promises, to all of us. Because I imagine the gratitude for the gifts from God would constantly, I don't it would make us joyful. It does make us joyful to think about the benefits of God in our life. I invite you again to breathe deeply and sink back down into that place where only you and God communicate. And I will read the prayer once more. My God, Father and Preserver, who in your goodness has watched over me in this past night and brought me to this day, grant that I may spend the day wholly in your service. Let me not think or say or do a single thing that is not in obedience to your will, but rather let all my actions be directed to your glory and the salvation of my brethren. Let me attempt nothing that is not pleasing to you, but rather let me seek happiness only in your grace and goodness. Grant also that as I labor for the goods and clothing necessary for this life, I may constantly raise my mind upward to the heavenly life which you promise to all your children. Amen. Tomorrow.